Hi, my name is Sam Wright. I'm the Linux system engineer for the Webmail team. Uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about uh, Graphite. Can you guys hear me okay in Blacksburg? No? no? About now. Yeah, that sounds better. Okay. So just a few of the questions I'll um, be answering with you guys. Um, first off, what is Graphite? What is Carbon? How does it all work in RSE? How does it all work together? Pain points and beats. Um, so first off, what is Graphite? Graphite is a uh, collection of software used to store, retrieve, and graph uh, metrics. The first piece of that software is Whisper. Um, it's the data storage backend written by the Carbon maintainers. It's, uh, it's, it's a RRD um, database equivalent. Um, it's about 500 lines and optimized for Carbon. Um, so Carbon is the process or the, the, the piece of the software that will process the metrics. Um, the Graphite API is the APIs that will actually render the graphs, um, as well as pull metrics from Carbon. And the web UI is the UI on top of all of that um, to basically demo the API. So first off, Whisper. Whisper is a fixed size database written in Python by the Graphite maintainers. Its main um, goal is to simply write metrics to disk. Um, I believe it's actually a part of the API, but for this presentation, I'll pretend it's separate. Um, but just know that it's not a running process on each server. So the, the bare meat of the, the system is the carbon. It's a set of daemons that run on the server to actually process metrics received by the server. There's three daemons that are involved with this. The first one is carbon cache. Its main responsibility is for actually receiving the metrics and writing them to disk. Um, using Whisper. Um, the next part of this is Carbon Relay. It has two main responsibilities, sharding and replication. Um, as far as sharding goes, you can shard between Carbon Caches and other Carbon Relays. Um, and you have two different methods for sharding. It's consistent hashing and rule-based. I'll talk about those a little bit later. But effectively, co consistent hashing you have no control over. Rule-based you have to manage with, with actual rules that fit um, uh, regexes. The other function of the carbon relay is replication, to replicate data. In uh, the carbon configs, there is a variable called uh, what is it, replication factor. And based on which number you put in there, similar to how RAID works, it'll stripe files across different disks. Um, that way you have a little bit more data redundancy. Um, the third carbon uh, daemon is carbon aggregator. We don't use it in RSE. But its goal is to actually aggregate metrics before hitting the disk. Um, this results in better disk I.O., uh, smaller file sizes, and um, it's better if you have a ton of metrics coming into your system and you don't have enough resources to handle it all. And you don't have a way to like trim out metrics that you don't need. Um, the problem with this is, though, if you have 10 second resolution metrics coming into your system and you are, your carbon aggregator is configured to do one minute resolutions, um, you won't get as much resolution out of it as you would want. Um, it's better to configure your storage retention policy to uh, aggregate data and roll it up at certain intervals to the higher resolution so you don't store as much on, on disk. So the next part is the Graphite APIs. Um, I'm just sort of walking through these um, from the bottom up just so you guys get a visualization. Um, just a few examples from their website. I mean, this is just a a typical HTTP uh, API. You, uh, you hit it through the slash render URL. Um, this example is simply just hitting uh, a single namespace and it's requesting a graph of size 800 by 600. Um, any other configuration options default. Um, this one is simply just pulling um, a wildcard uh, namespace, server.webstar.load. Um, and it's actually averaging all the, all the different namespaces that come out of that wildcard. And it's gonna display results over the last 12 hours. Um, the final example here uh, is pulling in a, just a single namespace and returning the data instead of an image as uh, JSON format. Um, other format options are uh, raw, which is some custom looking um, text display thing. Uh, the other thing is CSV. So if you like CSV instead of JSON. So this is the web UI. It's really bad. Um, 
This is, this is simply just graphing a single uh, namespace. It's rse.webapps.wastage.i3a.webapps.app28 load load short term. Um, and it doesn't even have text. Um, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's not very good for demonstrating graphics. There are, you do have access to all the functions that you do in the API, but the web UI itself does not have any features that allow you to interact with the data other than simply displaying it. Um, and that's a negative. Um, in RSE, we use um, Grafana. It's a, I think it's a fork of Kibana, or at least at some point it was. Um, and it's, I'll, I'll demo that at the end. Um, so let's talk about Graphite in Rackspace email. Um, so we have a clustered setup. Um, we have one proxy server and two storage nodes per DC. Per, per DC and we have um, a cluster in IA3 and we have a cluster in Ord1C. Uh, if, you are a, if you are a production server in DFW or IA3 and you want to send metrics to our system, uh, you will look up um, metrics.rsaps.net in DNS and we use split DNS to determine which cluster you go to. So if you're in IA3 or DFW, you'll go to the IA3 proxy. If you're in Ord, you'll, if you're in Ord A1, A1, Ord 1A, Ord 1B, or Ord 1C, um, you'll go to the Ord C proxy. And um, the one thing to note here is proxies have uh, relays and APIs where the storage nodes run APIs, relays, and caches. And the I3 proxy, uh, it has Grafana running on it, which is um, different than Ord 1C. And the reason for that is we ha it's considered the master um, metric server or the master proxy server. Um, in that for reads, it has to know about all the other storage nodes. And I think I'll get to that here in a second. Um, just know that one is just a little bit different um, for reasons. So if we take a detailed look at uh, one of the storage nodes, we have uh, a, single, a single storage node with a, a single relay, a single API, 12 carbon cache instances, and then whisper writing to disk. So if I was a metric that was coming into this storage node, I would first hit the relay. The relay would then do consistent hashing or rule-based um, sharding and figure out which one of the carbon caches I would end up hitting. Um, this is a great place for consistent hashing because it doesn't matter. Uh, because all the carbon caches will eventually end up writing to the whisper storage uh, and eventually then to disk. Uh, or in the whisper storage format to disk. They do store a little bit in memory so they don't just hammer the disk every time they get hammered. Um, and I guess that's why they're technically a cache. Uh, if we look at a generic proxy node, we have an API and a relay running on there. Uh, reads come into the proxy on the API, and uh, writes come in on the relay, and then get filtered to the appropriate place. So if we look at a, a full detailed example of writing a metric, we have an inbound metric coming into the proxy node on the relay. The relay then either does consistent hashing or rule-based sharding um, to figure out which one of the relays it'll go to, and then takes into consideration the replication factor. Uh, I think if the replication factor is set to two, it'll go to two storage nodes, or if it's set to one, it'll simply just go to one, or three if you have three. Um, so it'll pick one of the storage nodes to go to. It'll then, the, the second relay on disk will receive that metric, and then perform the same function, and send it to one of the 12 carbon caches. And at some point, one of those 12 carbon caches will then write uh, the metric to disk. Now, the reading metric data is a little bit more complicated. Um, we have a single proxy node that knows about every single storage node in the entire cluster across DC. The reason for that is the way uh, graphite clustering works, which is how we set up our multi-DC um, environment. In the carbon configuration for the proxy node, there is a list of storage nodes that it knows about. Um, specifically the port that the API is listening on. And specifically in that file, there's a comment that says you must, the, 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 the port that you're specifying here must be the API and it must have direct access to the disk um, with a metric on it. In other words, if, this, if, if the proxy node here was listening on, or was one of the, sorry, if the proxy node was configured to send to another proxy node that was then configured to send uh, a read query to an, one of two storage nodes, that simply wouldn't work because the metrics are not available on disk on that particular node, the first node down. 
So we have to configure the IAD3 proxy in this case to be able to hit all four API instances on all four storage nodes. Another way this works, um, when it comes in, so we have, a, so we'll just step through the demo. Um, we have a user requesting a graph in Grafana. It's a JavaScript that runs on the user's machine. And so the user's machine is effectively hitting the API directly. The API will then perform a uh, clustered query API across all four APIs. It'll first hit the very first storage node in the API and then wait for a response. If it returns no data set, it'll, the, the API on the proxy node will then query the next storage node and so on until it finds a result where all the nodes have been queried. In the case of ORD-C, uh, the, the proxy node in IAD3 will have to do a cross DC VPN link connection to be able to hit those storage nodes. Um, and that's just provided by the data center. That's not something I've set up. Um, so there is a lot of inefficiency in this, in how metrics are read. Um, I think that's properly demonstrated here. Um, so if you're trying to get data into Graphite, into our specific system, you can send metrics to either, well, I guess you can send it to either a cache or relay. We want you to send to the I or whichever proxy node metrics are um, resolves to. So the first option you can do as a production server is install statsd. And if you're a custom application like webmail, you can use, you can implement statsd classes or a statsd class um, that will provide different data structures and methods to be able to send metrics to a graphite cluster. Well, specifically a statsd daemon that runs on the production server that is configured to send to the graphite cluster. Um, next is collect d. It comes with a uh, set of plugins um, that are pre-configured to pull in metrics. Um, with statsd, you have to write every single metric that you want to pull in manually by hand. Uh, with collect d, you get, um, just by enabling a, a single plugin, you get um, on the order of magnitude of like tens to hundreds of metrics, um, depending on which one you uh, enable. Um, for example, different things you can enable with collect d are like MySQL metric collection, uh, which includes things like queries per second. Um, you can also, there's also a Redis um, Collecti plugin. There are plugins for Python that you can write, write custom Collecti plugins with Python. Um, there's other things like CPU usage, disk usage, um, load, et cetera. Um, the final option is to actually write your own um, graphite sending utility. And it's, it's, it's actually very simple. Um, for our chat system that we use with, um, with webmail, it runs Tagase, which is a Java application. Uh, metrics are, are provided to us via the JMX console. However, the way they did it uh, requires parsing of the output. So I wrote a Python plugin or a Python script that will uh, simply open a socket, pull in all the data from the JMX, and then open a socket to metrics.rsapps.net and send it a, a string. And the, the format that uh, Graphite expects is namespace, space, uh, value, space, Unix timestamp. If for some reason you couldn't contact the graphite cluster, you can simply just add a, uh, a new line and then append any new metrics you might have to, um, to this list. Um, so you can send multiple metrics at the same time. You don't have to actually wait for, um, you don't actually have to send them one at a time, open up a socket each time. Um, so some of the pain points we ran into when we were um, configuring, I say we is Sean Drummond and myself. Um, some of the pain points we ran into um, we couldn't find well-structured documentation very easily. Uh, however, once we did find some of the documentation, um, it was very helpful in helping us configure and set up the, the system. Um, and it gave us some ideas for how to actually cluster and, and scale this. Um, Graphite needs a better clustering solution, um, simply put. Like, if we look back at this, this, uh, this data flow here is, is really screwed up. If we had parallelization of each API, we could actually get a result faster um, than having to, from, from the third node, instead of having to wait for node one and two to respond immediately. Um, this is more data being flowing through the network, um, so that might be a, a reason that the Graphite maintainers didn't choose this, this uh, direction to go. But another way that they could um, make this better is by uh, aggregating the data when it actually gets returned to the, the proxy nodes API. The proxy nodes API could know how to aggregate different servers together 
uh, different servers results together and provide one output to the user. Um, in the case that two servers had the same metric for the same point in time, um, we would have, there would have to be some rule that says, okay, which sort server is considered authoritative. Um, regardless of what is picked in our particular case, it wouldn't matter um, based on our namespacing and um, other things. So parallelization and ag basic aggregation it doesn't have to be anything complicated. Um, consistent hashing versus rule-based rule sharding. Consistent hashing is simply you just do it, it just happens. Um, it takes in different things like the namespace and probably the sending IP, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it takes in different values and then um, basically just like a bucket sort or something and um, places that metric on a particular server. Uh, and because it uses a hashing algorithm, it puts it on the same server every time. However, if you add new servers to rotation, um, either new storage nodes or in a different TC, you run into some problems with consistent hashing um, trying to place some metrics on one server and some metrics on another. Um, Rule-based sharding um, is sort of a solution to that problem, but it requires a lot more um, overhead and configuration because you actually have to uh, configure a regex for each um, server and each type of namespace you might expect. Um, and so you would definitely need to have, if we charted, or if we did, yeah, rule-based sharding based on um, like which team was sending it and which um, cluster of theirs it was sending it from. Um, we would then have to like make sure we do replication so we don't lose an entire cluster's worth of data if one server were to go down. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot more um, effort involved with rule-based sharding. Another pain point was we didn't, Graphite does not provide uh, any basic tools um, to help manage the cluster. Um, I did find on uh, GitHub a project called Carbonate. Um, you can configure it to run off of your local machine um, if you can reach the, the any, what I mean to say is it can, you can configure it to run on any server. It doesn't have to necessarily be the graphite servers. Um, and it's just a simple tool that provides um, primitive like lookups and selects and deletes and stuff uh, on the graphite cluster. Um, so the other thing is wildcard queries. So anything with a star in the namespace, um, the more wildcards you use in a, in a query, the time it takes to return a result grows exponentially. And the rounding team can speak to that specifically. Um, I think they have a graph with like four or five wildcards in it and it takes seven minutes to return. Um, yeah, so one option that could be used to at least alleviate some of the pain from waiting that long is potentially streaming the results. Um, as things come in and things can be graphed, Graphite could um, simply just display those results on the screen even though, or simply re or return those results in a stream as opposed to just dumping it into a, a, like a post or something. Um, the other option is to simply uh, optimize the clustering solution. If we had better reads that took less time, um, we could get faster results from wildcards. Um, finally, these are some good articles um, that we used um, to determine how we wanted to configure this the system. Um, the first set is articles on how uh, other companies had to actually gather their metrics. This is uh, Etsy and Flickr. Um, the next one is uh, an expert in the Grafana world to uh, information on how to actually do your namespacing if you're starting from scratch. Um, we kind of referenced this guide when we were coming up with our namespacing. Um, and then we have some articles on how to actually configure and cluster graphite. So that's, that's all I have. If anybody has any questions, then I'll unmute San Francisco. Cool. Sure. Awesome. Thank you.